Hi everybody, welcome to a new episode of the vlog. Uh, this is gonna probably be a quick little one-take video. Uh, I went to Crazy Bob's Music Emporium in Langley, it's my favorite record store, uh, and I got some really awesome uh, 50s and 60s classic rock and roll, like the early, early days of rock and roll. Uh, and uh, I also got some old school R&B and soul and some country stuff too. Pretty much all, I think, from the 50s and 60s. Mostly. Mostly from the 50s and 60s. I love Crazy Bob's in Langley. Uh, check it out if you're in the area. It, this is not a sponsored video in any way. I don't get any sort of discount for mentioning them. Um, the only uh, benefit I get is that maybe some of you will head out there and keep the place alive you know what I'm saying anyway found some great stuff I'm gonna start here look at that look at that oh it's so beautiful I check the James Brown section every time there's usually or I check the soul section for James Brown every time I should say I rarely find anything because it gets picked through so quickly because I'm not the only James Brown enthusiast out there but to find an old school prisoner of love copy from 1963 is awesome it's on regency because the king records releases were well it's upside down were issued on regency in canada although i think it's interesting that they still use the regular american sleeves from the uh u.s plant uh only manufactured the album itself in canada it would seem um and then i also have oh i was thrilled to see this as well i had uh these fats domino records in the uh uh, record frames just for my last uh, video. I just did a video on him and I found this uh, Fats Domino Rock and Roll and this album came out before either of those. This is an early album from 1956 uh, It's an early pressing from Canada these early pressings I've never come across a US one only the Canadian ones And so I don't know if it's the same over there, but at least the Canadian ones. They're not made of your typical um, Record sleeve material. It's very Thin, flimsy, like an inner sleeve almost. Um, maybe, I guess Imperial had a lower budget record manufacturing system in the 50s. Uh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful! Oh, I was so excited to find that too. Um, then I found, okay, this, I love this album more than I even expected to, okay? I found this. That's a kind of iconic cover right there. Brenda Lee's self titled album from 1960. I'm just getting into. Her music she had some great stuff i had her kind of written off as so she's just the uh country pop girl no it's some genuine rock and roll music on this album um and some massive hits on it of course like the song i'm sorry and also sweet nothings she was i believe 15 when she recorded this album it's pretty insane and uh, you can tell it's vintage from uh i love the absolutely ancient deca center ring label design i love it um yeah just another awesome find that i got a chance to listen to yesterday thoroughly enjoyed it um uh we're gonna move over firmly into the world of country here for roger miller uh somebody has colored poor roger's teeth green at this at some point um <laughs> i had the option too i had a couple of uh one uh a couple of albums a couple of copies of this album rather uh on the shelf next to each other um and one of them was mono and one of them was stereo and i was like which one do i want but the stereo one seemed to be in somewhat better condition so i wound up with this despite the fact that there's some green on the front cover i i don't know too much roger miller stuff um uh but i love the song king of the road so i'm eager to check this one out for sure i also I thought I'd check the Dolly Parton section, see if I can find um, some really old school Dolly Parton because I've been getting into her lately and oh boy did I. Look at this early pressing of uh, Just Because I'm a Woman from 1968 on the old style of RCA uh, Victor Centering. This album came out in 68 which was also the year that uh, RCA rebranded and stopped using this. Uh, label design so you know so I know this is an early pressing for sure really excited to listen to that one. Oh, speaking of Dolly here's an album that is not uh, from the 50s or 60s but speaking of Dolly I also picked up a copy of the trio album with of course Dolly Parton Emmylou Harris and my favorite singer ever Linda Ronstadt um, I have a copy I bought a copy of this album a couple years ago 
uh, and it was in great shape, looked perfect, and just skipped like crazy. Sometimes you can visually um, like look at an album all you want, it can look fine, and it just won't. It's hard to explain, so I'm hoping I'll have uh, better luck with that copy, for sure. Um, oh, I got, yes, uh, some classic Motown. I believe this is a reissue of uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes, Live at London's Talk of the Town. This album originally came out in 1968, which means that it would have originally been on a black and white Tamla Motown label in Canada. This one is on your classic uh, blue Motown uh, label, but and it is a Canadian copy for sure, but that leads to me, that leads me to believe that this was probably manufactured sometime after 1973, I think, unless there were some early Canadian copies with the blue label. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that this particular copy is from the 70s, um, but still, it's in pretty great shape. I love Motown's live albums, and I haven't heard that one, so I'm excited to hear that. And then lastly, I just picked up a couple of uh, Roy Orbison records. Um, well, I got sort of polar opposite ends of his career. I got the early Orbison, and I got the late Orbison. I got, this is, <laughs> yeah, early Orbison um, was a Monument Records compilation that came out in 1964 after he had left Monument for Warner Brothers, uh, and Monument was trying to make some more money off the catalog of his that they owned, and so they put this out, which mostly has songs from his first couple of Monument albums, but there's a couple of tracks on here that you can't find on an LP anywhere else. So, cool. Gotta give that a listen. And then, of course, Roy Orbison's final album, uh, it was released posthumously in uh, early 1989. Um, yeah, The Great Mystery Girl, produced by uh, Jeff Lynn uh, around the time that the two of them were in um, the Traveling Wilburys together, and I want to say that, let me double check here, make sure I'm correct, um, I don't know, I gotta check the songwriting credits, but I think that, uh, some of the other members of the Traveling Wilburys, uh, wrote a couple of songs on this as well, um, uh, I guess just You Got It is co-written by, uh, by Tom Petty, um, yeah, and then, of course, Jeff Lynne does a lot of uh, writing on the album, as well as producing the whole darn thing. Uh, this one wasn't in the best of shape, so hopefully it plays through fine, but I've always wanted to hear the full version of that album. I also rated the 45s as well. Uh, Crazy Bob's has tons of 45s. They used to just all be in the back, and you'd have to go through them, but they've spent the last several months really going through and cataloging everything, and I picked up some really good stuff. Check out this EP. I'm not done with the Fats Domino stuff. Uh, Here Comes Fats uh, from 1957, originally released on Imperial Records, but this is a UK uh, import, I guess, from l the uh, London American label. Uh, I remember seeing an interview with, uh, with uh, Elton John where he said that American or London American had Fats Domino and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and all. In the UK, that was the label that you could listen to all those American early rock and rollers. Speaking of American early rock and rollers, here's a couple of singles uh, that I'm really stoked to have. This is Chuck Berry's Maybelline from 1955. I do believe that these Canadian quality versions... I don't know if they're original. I think this might be actually from the early 60s, this particular pressing, but I'm still glad to have it with Wee Wee Hours on the B side. And then this, oh, I was so freaking stoked to see this. This is Little Richard's Keep a Knockin' in its original specialty sleeve. Uh, oh, and you know what? Just looking at it now, I think this is a U.S. pressing as well. I just realized that based on the Santa Monica Boulevard address on the back. Uh, I haven't done enough due diligence and research to check and see if this is an original 1957, 56? I forget exactly when this song came out version, but isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful thing? I think so. Um, 
We've got some classic Motown with the Marvelettes, please, Mr. Postman. Yes, that is a blue Tamla label, and yes, that is weird. I guess they used these in Canada for a brief time. Then I was also able to pick up the legendary live uh, uh, fingertips single from Stevie Wonder. Of course, the what you've probably heard most is part two. Uh, it was pretty normal for R&B singles of the 60s and 70s to be uh, two-parted. Uh, uh, one first half of the song you get on side one and then you flip it over and you get the rest of the extended jam uh, but fingertips is one of those rare songs where part two um, was the part that the was that the radio stations would play um, speaking of two parted uh, soul singles you have the legendary what I say I was so excited to see this uh, what did I say by Ray Charles and his orchestra part one on one side part two on the other so exciting more early soul i love this song only 16 uh by sam cook i don't know if this art if this rio record sleeve is of the same era as this single i did mix and match these oh yeah the b-side is a song called let's go steady again and just in, and just in case you thought that i was done uh with the fats domino stuff nope i got one more I got My Girl Josephine, because I love that song. came out in 1960 uh, with the B-side of Natural Born Lover. And then finally, the last item from my record haul today, The Temptations Power. Uh, the song came out in 1980. I believe it came off of the album called Power as well. Yes, it did. And um, I don't have that album, and I like this song. I've seen a clip of them performing this song online so i thought i'd pick that up too this concludes uh my record haul for this week i don't make a video every time i go to a record store just if i have a particularly uh i find a particular load of good stuff and i sure did uh thank you so much for watching check out crazy bob's music emporium uh if you haven't already did i say that right did i say crazy's bob music emporium crazy bob's music emporium i don't know uh, talking is hard. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I do lots of music history content on this channel uh, if you're interested. Um, I also uh, make music myself. Uh, check out the description for links to where you can find my music, where it's sold or streamed online. Uh, like this video if you liked what you saw. Subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying my videos and you can ring the notification bell if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, uh, which should be real soon. Thank you for watching. Really excited with the albums. Uh, that I was able to pick up today. Thanks for watching. Catch you again real soon.